Today I wanted to make a video that I think I'm going to call something like what you need to know about blockchains if you're an NFT artist. So I still get a lot of questions from people um, who are NFT artists, right? They're very good artists, but they still have a hard time understanding how NFTs work with the blockchain, how that all integrates with OpenSea. And I don't blame them. I, I looked around and there's not a ton of content out there that really goes deep technically on how this all works. Uh, and so I want to put this video together just so if you're an NFT artist and you want to understand the technical side of things so you don't necessarily always have to rely on somebody else to explain it to you, um, then, you know, this, this video could be for you. So I'm in Mintables here. I created a project called Simple Dinos. Um, and you can see it's very simple. There's only four layers. And so the point isn't to really deploy a good looking NFT project. It's just to show how it all works under the hood. So I'm gonna start by doing a quick rink be deploy. And uh, the minting price could be zero. I'm gonna create a smart contract here so that we can, after this is done, we can go into Etherscan and we can start playing around with the internals of this smart contract so that you can see kind of how it all works at the blockchain level. And from there, we can figure out how OpenSea works, how Mintable works, how looks rare, where how the, all the marketplaces for NFTs actually work under the hood. So I'll meet you guys back here in like 10 minutes when this is done deploying. Okay, awesome. So we have our contract deployed to Rinkby, the Rinkby blockchain. So first of all, what, what did we just do here? What we did is think about Rinkby and think about all blockchains. So Ethereum, Polygon, Solana. Think about them as just like a big computer that's shared across everybody in the whole world. And so what we just did is we just deployed our NFT collection to that computer. So that's what it means to be an NFT is that you, you are deployed, uh, an NFT application is running on the Rinkby blockchain. Or another way of saying that is the, an NFT application is running on the Rinkby computer. If I click this here, you can see that this is our contract that was just created. Okay, cool. So we just deployed our contract. It is now, we now have our NFT application running on the Rinkby blockchain. Let's take a look at what our contract can do. What, what, it, what is a contract? And specifically, what is an NFT contract? The first thing here is the balance. Every single Ethereum or Ethereum-like blockchain will have, every single contract will have a balance. And this is just how much cryptocurrency is stored in this contract. So right now it's obviously zero because nobody's minted anything yet. But, you know, I'm going to come back here. We're going to start minting stuff and you'll see that number start to tick up. Every single contract can also store some data. And let's take a look at some of the important bits of data in our contract. So you can see that there's a lot of stuff that it's storing here. Um, but one thing that it stores that's important is, for instance, the price. So I, I didn't set a price for our, our NFTs. Uh, maybe I'll go back and I'll change that in Mintables to change the price to something else. But for now, actually, we're, we're basically giving away our NFTs for free. Here you can see get supply. This is how, what is the maximum number of NFTs that can be purchased from this collection. So I set the maximum to be 10,000. There's another number down here called total supply. That's zero. Total supply is how many have actually been minted, which so far is zero since we just deployed it. Here is the name and the symbol that we gave last time. So that should make sense. The most, one of the most important things here is the owner. You can see the owner is a wallet address, and it turns out that's my wallet address. And the owner of a contract is important because, like we set up here, a contract can hold funds. It can hold it, it has a balance. And you want to make sure that only the owner of the contract can actually withdraw that balance into their wallet. So, what we really don't want to have happen is somebody else be able to withdraw from our contract that we own. So, in this case, because I'm the owner, only I can withdraw from this uh, smart contract. 
we need to start minting stuff to really be able to play around with this. So I'm gonna actually gonna hop in here. Let's open up our marketplace. Uh, and so let me start, let me mint. Okay, so I'm gonna mint this. And you can see that there's some amount of gas fee that I have to pay. So even though the, the NFT itself is free, there are some gas fees. Uh, we'll talk about why gas fees are necessary later, but right now just know that anything, pretty much anything that you do to a blockchain, you have to pay gas fees. Okay, so this is now minting and it usually takes about two to three minutes for something to kind of mint and be saved to the blockchain. And we'll see what that means to be saved to the blockchain in a sec here. So let's come back here in like two to three minutes again, and uh, we'll take a look at how our contract changes. Okay, and we're back. So our little dino here has been officially minted, which means that it has been officially saved to the blockchain. I'll come back here, I'll refresh our contract, and let's take a look at kind of what's changed after I minted one NFT from this collection. First of all, the balance didn't actually change. And this is unfortunate. This is because I forgot to actually set a price. So the price of my NFT that I just minted was actually zero. I only paid gas fees, so it was basically free. That's why this balance never went up. But what's actually more important, I want to come down here. Look at this. Total supply is now one. The first time we saw this total supply was zero, and now it's one. So that something has been minted in this collection. This collection now has one NFT in it. This is new, and this is kind of gets at the heart of what an NFT actually is. So I'm going to put zero here because, and the reason I'm putting zero is just because I know that's how this contract works. But in general, every single NFT contract will behave somewhat similarly. I put in zero, and what this does is this gets me the metadata for the NFT. And because I have NFT zero, or my NFT is the first, you know, zero is kind of the first element in this collection. Um, my token ID is zero. And so my metadata is actually here. So if I open this up, take a look at what is at that URL. This is the actual metadata for the NFT. And you can see here that the image for the NFT is stored. It's one more URL. Here's my image. Here are the attributes that I had selected from the previous page. Right. This is my. Uh, this is the name of the NFT, and this is the description. Um, here's the DNA. Here's the date. Stuff like this. This is what a blockchain is, right? All this information is public. All this information is public. You know, Mintables is not integrated with uh, EtherScan. These EtherScan and Mintables don't know anything about each other, but because they are both connected to the blockchain, and the blockchain is a shared computer. And on top of that, ERC721 is a very specific type of application. Uh, everything can just start working together, even though they don't actually know about each other. And so that's why if I come back here, you can see that we actually have an OpenSea link, and OpenSea will show the exact same information, okay, as what we created here ourselves by manually checking uh, token ID zero, following this link to get to here, and then following this link to get to here. What we just did is exactly what OpenSea just did as well. So how does OpenSea actually work? Here's the contract address. So imagine, you know, if, if I pretend I'm OpenSea, what I'm doing is I'm kind of going to the blockchain, I'm finding this contract address, and I'm Plugging into, so basically, you know, I would come, the, imagine that the, if I'm OpenSea, this is where I go, right? This is the contract address, right? So the, it's in the URL, all the data is in the URL. This is the contract address. This is the token ID. So I come to this contract address. I go to the token URI. I put in that token ID, which is zero. And I look at where, you know, what is, what, what is the metadata for this NFT? I visit that link, I follow the image field, 
and I get the image and that's how I fill out everything here. So that's how this part's filled out, right? That's how it knows that the, the bodies is uh, green 10, red laser two, military five, background is five. That all just comes from here. And then the actual image comes from here. Okay, so now let's go back to the actual contract owner. What's interesting here actually is that I, I use the same wallet to deploy the contract as I did to mint that previous NFT. So it's actually, I think it's actually the exact, yeah, it's actually the exact same address. That's fine. So basically what this means is for this contract, uh, this wallet owns the contract and it also owns the very first NFT in that collection. And so, you know, a lot of people ask me about how to set up royalties on OpenSea. How does, how does OpenSea know who to pay out royalties to? Well, OpenSea checks the blockchain. And when it checks the blockchain, it'll see that the owner is this wallet. And so when I come to OpenSea and I look at the overall collection, so here's my collection, simple dinos. There's only a single item, right? There's only one item because only one item has been minted so far. And so for this item, you can see that because I am currently connected to OpenSea with this wallet address, 0xEA9, OpenSea shows me these two buttons. Because what OpenSea just did is it checks the blockchain and it checks who is the actual owner of this contract, of this collection. And it sees that my 0xEA9 is the owner and that's why it lets me edit this. So just, just to prove this, I'm actually gonna switch my, the thing that I'm, the, the wallet that I'm connected with. So I'll connect with this one instead. And now if I refresh this, you'll see that I cannot edit this anymore. That edit was, is now gone. So that's because this new wallet address is 0x56. That is not the owner of this, of this collection. Okay, let me go back. I'm gonna refresh the page and you can see I can actually, I can edit, and I could um, set the royalties. So I'll actually go ahead, I'll edit this. So this is actually where you would, Oh, and so real quick, when I click edit here, what OpenSea is asking me to do is to kind of prove that I'm the owner. So, you know, that's what the signing is doing. It's I'm proving that I'm in the actual owner. Uh, I don't want to get too technical here, but that's effectively what I just did here. And then I could set the logo image. I could set the featured image. I could set the banner image. And down here. Okay, so this is like kind of my social links. Here's where I could set my creator earnings, right? So I could say I want 2.5% of all transactions that are done with, uh, through OpenSea or anything in this collection. And so if somebody buys my, you know, if somebody buys that, uh, the NFT that I just minted and they buy it for one Ethereum, then I would get something like 0.025 Ethereum. And I have to specify what my payout wallet address is. So this doesn't actually have to be the same wallet address as the owner of the contract. It could be, this could be a totally different wallet address. So you can, you can put your mom's wallet address, for instance, here, if you wanted to. For me, I'll just use the same wallet address that I have connected. That there. Uh, and I can change kind of how it's displayed on OpenSea. And I can, I can do all this. Remember, I could do all this because OpenSea knows through the blockchain that I am the owner of this collection. So let me set a logo image. Um, yeah, I could set something. That, and I'll do something. I mean, I'm not trying to make this look good or anything like that, so that for now. And I could submit my. Okay, it's been updated. So let's go. Let me go back to this collection. You can see that the <laughs> the the logo has changed. The cover image has changed. And now, if if anybody were to buy or sell anything from this collection, um, two point five percent of the, you know, of the transaction would would go to my wallet address, and it'd be paid out through OpenSea.
Okay, so another question that I always get is why do I even have to worry about this blockchain smart contracts? Why do I have to worry about any of that stuff? Because you can just come over here to OpenSea, hit create, and they make it super easy. Just create my NFT. And you can just come in here and you can do all the same things, right? You can also create properties. So I'll say like, you know, character, character, character is a male. Um, and the blockchain is Ethereum. And I'll go ahead and I'll create it. Okay, so I just created an NFT, right? Supposedly. And I can sell it. And I didn't have to worry about minting. I didn't have to worry about smart contracts or blockchains. But here's the thing with this NFT. This is only created on OpenSea. This only exists on OpenSea until somebody actually buys it. So the fact you, you know this because you didn't have to pay any gas fees to create this NFT. And that means that it's not actually been minted yet. So if I come down here and I take a look at the details. So remember the details page, if I come back to the, this is the simple dyno that we had created on the blockchain earlier. See the contract address, the token ID is zero, token standard is 721, and the blockchain's ring fee, that's a test network. The one that I just created here, here's the contract address. The token ID is very different, it's very long. And there's a token standard, which is actually not 721 anymore, it's 1155. And the blockchain's Ethereum, which is good. Um, and the metadata is editable. That doesn't mean anything for our purposes here. So if I click through this contract address, you'll actually see that if I compare that to the contract that I had created over here. You see the, tr the, the name of the contract that I had created through Mintables is called Simple Dinos and has a symbol called Simple. The OpenSea one, uh, it's called OpenSea Shared Storefront, and the token is, is Storefront. The symbol is Storefront. So that means that you're actually sharing this contract with everybody else who's creating NFTs on OpenSea. That's the first point. The second point is that when you created this, you never actually, uh, this information does not live on the blockchain. It only lives on OpenSea's databases. And what happens is when somebody actually buys this NFT from you, that's when OpenSea will put this information on the blockchain. So this NFT will not, you will not be able to see, you will not be able to see this NFT on any other marketplace until somebody actually mints it for you. And so that's why most popular collections have their own contract. Because the biggest thing is that when you, when you create through OpenSea, you're actually sharing this contract with everybody else who kind of creates on OpenSea. Um, and so you don't really have like your own space on the blockchain. You're sharing this contract with everybody else who's minting. So if we take a look at some popular projects, I'll take a look at Cool Cats. If I open this, you'll see that the contract address is this. Here's the token ID. The token standard is a 721 and the blockchain is Ethereum. So if I open up their contract and take a look here, you'll see that it, you know, they have their own contract. It's cool cats. Um, the symbol is cool. And this contract also has all the same things that we saw in our simple dinos contract. So you'll see that there is a name, which is cool cats. There's a symbol right, which is cool. Total supply, which we also have, 9,941. And you can see the owner of, okay, so which one were we looking at just now? We were looking at 8527. So the owner of 8527 is this wallet, 0XAA. And if I look at Kind of, if you look at OpenSea, you'll see that if I click through here, this person, you know, they, they gave themselves kind of a username, but you'll see that their actual wallet is also 0xAA, right? So 
Owen NFT, or that's the name, that's the username for this address, but this address owns this NFT for the Cool Cats collection. The last thing here, uh, the difference between ERC721 and the one that OpenSea gives you, which is ERC, where is that one? That is, you have to go back. Oh yeah, ERC one one five five. So what is the difference between ERC seven twenty one and ERC one one five five? Well, there's a you know there's actually a lot of differences, but fundamentally for you, uh, if you're an NFT artist, the real difference is that ERC seven twenty ones are non fungible, and they really only it's like a single collection. So it's a single contract for a single collection. ERC-1155 is a contract that can hold many different collections, and the collections could actually be fungible as well as non-fungible, which what that means is you can own uh, a part of an NFT. And, and so that's why OpenSea uses ERC-1155 is because they have this one contract that everybody shares and a ton of collections get deployed onto, right? So the last thing here, just to prove that, uh, I'm just going to go back to Cool Cats because I think this would actually be a cool, uh, a cool exercise, just to prove that uh, what we did earlier with simple dinos is actually um, the correct way of doing it. You'll see that Cool Cats does it the exact same way. So uh, if I put in a Cool Cats, what was the Cool Cats token ID? Eight five twenty seven. So if I put in Cool Cats 8527, you see that they also give you this URL. Okay, so this is the metadata URL, right? So for di uh, for simple dinos, it was this. Let's take a look at what that is for Cool Cats. It's this, right? So it looks very similar. And if I click through on the image here, you'll see that Cool Cats also has attributes. It has a name, it has an image, and the image is the image of, of the cool cat, 8527. So I hope this was helpful. I hope it was helpful. You know, this stuff is, 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 is pretty complex and I don't blame anybody for not quite understanding it. It took me quite a while to understand it as well. Um, I hope this video clears things up for some people. And uh, yeah, let, you know, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I will do my best to answer.